back here in Queens. And we welcome you in already two away here in the seventh. John Chomby with Chris Singleton. Here's Nicholas Castellanos singing you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. Now, this ball is well hit. This one's got a chance. Pulls it in on the warning track. Phillies leave a couple. Score remains tied at four. And welcome back. Here's a speed threat, Brandon Nimmo. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Going one. Look, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Here's a 1-1. There's the strike. Swings and misses, one up, one down. Now, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it, from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Marte stands in now and lets that one go for a strike. Next one misses, and the count is one and one. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. One down, base is empty. Bounces over the wall is foul ground. It's an automatic double. The automatic double kind of feels like enjoying cruise control in the car, boo. You don't need to keep the pedal down as you cruise into second base. Just no worries in the world. You know what? He put a really good swing on that one. And yeah, the Phillies manager making his way towards the mound now as he will make a move. That'll be it for Kyle Gibson. And as he heads off, we'll step aside for a minute. Back with the new pitcher after this break. Chris Sir Anthony Dominguez has checked into the game. He has a great slider with tons of movement. One down. Here's the shortstop at the play. Francisco Lindor, one for three. And a pitch. Swings and lines a base hit into left field. He's in there. Oh, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. One gone runner at first. Pete Alonso digs in now. comes a pitch nope. and that one just misses a ball and no strikes the pitch and that's in there at the knees the fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective just got to keep it on the corners kicks and deals that one fouled off Right-handed reliever on the ground to third. Dives, but it kicks off his glove. He decides to hold on to it, and they come away without an out. Now Here's Mark Hanna. Mark. Hanna. Dominguez back to work. In the air, right field. And he moves up to third, now two away. Now batting, third baseman, 
Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. He's already homered here in this one. Well, both sides equally as strong. So not a good time to try to turn him around with a relief pitcher and put him on the other side of the plate. Kicks and fires. Looking for some insurance. Or as our friends down in the South would say. Insurance. No matter how you say it, we know what you mean. Next pitch is outside. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. Real down. And a foul ball. Lindor, the runner at third. Alonso on at first with two down. Next offering is fouled back. Here comes a 3 2. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Mets five and the Phillies four. The Mets with a new arm on the mound, Seth Lugo. The offense will need to be ready for the breaking stuff. He's got a great curveball. Lugo. Back here at the ballpark for the top of the eight. Kyle Schwarber comes up to hit here. The designated hitter, Kyle Schwarber. And a pitch. And that one. Wrapped foul. Just missed. If he's able to connect on that, look out. The tying run at the plate. And ball one. Just missed. That's a really good take. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him. As a hitter, you feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. First out in the top of the eighth. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down one. Any lead on base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. Didi Gregorius at the plate. In there and it's 0-1. Next pitch misses and one and one. Next offering is fouled back. Stays alive. Right hander kicks deals. And a ground ball to first. Alonso handles the chance. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. Two up, two down here in the top of the eighth.
So digging in, Reese Hoskins for the fourth time tonight. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. The 0-1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. So now one and two to Reese. Hoskins pushes it foul. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Phillies down in order. Still down a run. It's five to four. Bailey Falter gets the call from the pen. Hasn't pitched in the last three days. Number 70, Bailey. Back here at City Field, bottom of the inning, and now the DH, Dominic Smith. Leading up for the Mets, the designated hitter, Dominic Smith. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come, but you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. Stirring in the Phillies bullpen, Jaori's Familia getting ready to go. Brogdon getting loose as well. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side, same side he throws from. Swing and a miss, struck him out, and he's down on strikes for the second down time back. today. And next for the Mets, Jeff McNeil. Good contact guy, good defender. First offering, misses the mark. Next pitch is popped up. Stop under it. Puts it away for the out. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. James McCann in now. But why to kick the pitch? Swings and misses. 0-1. Looks like he went up there guessing on the first pitch and was going to sell out to it. Didn't make any contact, though. Next offering is in for a strike. This guy's not wasting any pitches. Hitters got to get into swing mode. This is a good time to expand the zone. Throw something maybe down in the dirt. Ground ball left side. The throw to first, and that will end the inning. Nothing doing for the Mets. They lead it 5-4. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, and he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. Welcome back. New inning getting started. And now the catcher comes up to here. Garrett Stubbs. What are you looking to do in these spots? You're down a run. You're leading off the inning. He's not a power hitter, a guy that's looking to tie it up with one swing. So he's going to take and get into this at bat and try to get deep into the bat, ultimately, however he can, get to first base. And the righty deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. Got no base hits in the series for him so far, and it's clearly been a rough one. You just hope he's not pressing too hard because that just compounds things and makes the slump even longer. Never seemed to help, never helped me. And that one fouled off. Got him! And they get the leadoff man in the ninth. Stood absolutely no chance on that slider right there. And I don't mean to laugh, but that's a tough one. I mean, pretty much a perfect strikeout pitch. I mean, it looks like a fastball middle end. Kind of has cutter action, and it just bunches you up to where you can't get your hands through and the barrel to it. And not much you can do unless you recognize the spin early and you spit on it. And yeah, the batter now, Matt Veerly. That one's in there, 0-1. Yeah. 
Next offering is in for a strike. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. This is definitely what a team likes to see out of their closer. Will come in and just destroy all hope. First two batters, two strikeouts. See if he can strike out the side. Gene Segura at the plate here. And he deals. And a good fastball. Strike one. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. A swing and a soft liner. He puts it away, and that'll do it. The Mets hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one-run ball game. Back here at Chavez Ravine with Chris Singleton. I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us. Nobody out here in inning number eight. First and second. No outs. Mark Canna up now for the Mets. So RBI spot. But Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Well, this is a critical spot for both the pitcher and the hitter. You can learn a lot about a guy by how he handles these pressure situations. And here it comes. So two balls and no strikes. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. The 2-0 is in for a strike. Activity in the bullpen. Lake Trinan looks to be getting ready for manager Dave Roberts. Gratterol getting cranked up as well. Soft contact in the air, and that's a base hit. Lindor rounds third, headed for the plate. He'll score in the time. It's four to four. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. When you pop a ball up like that, you don't expect it to get you a knock too often. But right there, somehow he got it to drop in behind first base, and that's where no one could get to it. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Now, Eduardo Escobar. First pitch just misses. And a 1-0. And another ball. I think ultimately you want to tie him up. Get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, I think that pitch surprised all of us. Right down the middle. Doesn't get a swing. Not very often you see a hitter lay off a cookie like that. Tied at four. Swing and a pop-up in foul ground. And there's one down. Now, now it's J.D. Davis. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, but not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an in that could change the course of this game dramatically. Kimbrell back to work. Bottom of the zone and a called strike. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam.
strike two. Big pitch right here. He's going to try to make a pitch that's going to produce a strikeout or a ground ball double play. Stays alive. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Only two now. Ball one there. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. Kicks and deals. He swings and fouls one off. The pitch. Just misses with that one. That's a really good take. And that one is lifted in the air. He'll score the sack fly, and it's now 5-4. Sometimes that can be a little tough to score on. It was hit so hard that getting back to the bag to tag takes a little bit of time by the time that outfielder catches it, but a really good job of getting that run in from third. And now here's Jeff McNeil. And the pitch. That one's in there. That's strike one. Well, we call that keyhole. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Next offering is in for a strike. Perhaps not quite ready to hit. First two pitches by him for a couple of strikes. Now back is against the wall. He's going to have to figure something out and figure it out quickly. Oh, right to the backstop. That's a wild pitch as he moves into scoring position. To the right side. Third out. So five runs in the inning as they bat around. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Mets five and the Dodgers four. Back here at Dodger Stadium, Freddie Freeman up to the dish. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. The right-hander back to work. And a foul ball. I wonder how much of a distraction those fans behind home plate are to the opposing pitcher. I mean, they are into it. They're trying to will this club back into this ball game. 0 oh and 2 now. And now 1 and 2. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Well, the hitter's got his timing down for the breaking ball. If you're a pitcher, if you can get that fastball in on the hand, it's going to be very difficult for that hitter to get the barrel to it. The one, two. Got him. And that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth yeah, inning. Down one. Any leadoff base runner really yeah. makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. Muncie in the box now. Takes a cold strike. On the ground, right side. McNeil gets it to first. Two up, two down. And up to the plate is Will Smith. The 
pitch. That clips a corner. That was just paint on the first pitch fastball. That one the other way. That's a base hit. Well, that was an important at bat in this game, so a great job there now stepping up to the challenge. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Trevor May gets the ball now, and he'll work on holding this lead. Here's Turner now. And the first pitch misses for ball one. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Righty delivers. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. With a single base runner because of all the power, they are dangerous to tie this thing up or take the lead. And he really sells the changeup with that arm action. And a foul ball. Smash to the left side. And that's a base hit. They stop the lead runner at second. Now two on with two outs. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Substitution being made at first. Pinch running here. Trey Turner. Bellinger up to hit. The pitch. On the outside corner, strike one. His home fans, they are making a lot of noise, putting pressure on that pitcher out there. And he's down 0-2 as he swings through it. He finds himself in a tough situation early. Just got to try to simplify it. Take a knock the other way if you can. Going to count one and two. Well, no signs of wavering on the mound here in the eighth. He's looking rock solid so far. A swing and a soft liner. And Bellinger is out. And that is that. Dodgers strand a couple. They trail it 5-4. Trey Turner now in the game as he takes over third. Now playing third. All set to start the ninth in this one. Tomas Nito at the plate. This is a guy who's in the lineup first and foremost because of what he contributes defensively, Chris. When you talk about preventing runs from being scored, this guy is a big contributor. The pitch. Called strike right there. I was always told it's hard to take you off the field when you play really good defense, especially at a premier position, and that's what he does. And a pitch. That one finds the zone, and a count is 0-2. And a pitch. Stays alive. The next pitch misses, and that's ball one. The hitting's going to come around. He's going to figure it out. But right now, his big asset is the way he plays the game on defense. Next offering misses, and the count's even at two. Sometimes you got to fight to get back into an at-bat. Take some tough pitches, even out the count. And the right-hander deals. Got it. One down. Well, classic pitch sequencing there to change eye levels for the punch out. That fastball on the pitch before was off. It was very competitive. And that gets you thinking that he might try to climb the ladder. But then the curveball out of that same tunnel just falls off the table, and you can't make contact. Here's Brandon Nimmo. And he's already singled in this game. The pitch. That misses the zone, and that's ball one. Righty to the plate. And that's in for a strike. Pitch misses. Two balls and a strike. 
One run game here in the top of the ninth. Out towards right center field. Bellinger makes the grab. The right Here's Starling Marte. Starling Marte. And here it comes. It's not looking like they'll be adding any insurance runs heading to the bottom of the ninth, so it's going to be on the bullpen to hold this lead. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. And that one is lifted in the air. And that's the third out. 8 9 1 due up in the bottom of inning number nine. It's the Mets five and the Dodgers four. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, trying to protect this lead. And welcome back. So bottom of the ninth, Hunter Alberto up to the plate. So important to stay within yourself, especially for this hitter. Not known to be a power guy or a home run hitter. He needs to set the table by getting on with a walk or a base hit. One out, bottom of the ninth. Good late bite on that slider. Got the hitter out in front, rolled over on it. Exactly what second it was supposed to do. Man. Here's the second baseman, Austin Barnes. So you got the number nine hole hitter right here. Looking to do whatever he can to get on base, turn this lineup over so the best hitters in this lineup have a chance to tie up the ball game or maybe even walk it off. Next pitch is inside. And the count even one and one. Now, Boog, this is a real tough place for visiting teams to come in and close out ball games for a win. Here's a one-two. Swing and a miss, and he got him two away down. Well, we see it a lot more these days than we ever did when I played, but a slider in the 90s still catches your attention. Even if you're sitting on the pitch, good luck recognizing that tight spin and adjusting to the late break. Here's Mookie now. And a pitch. In the air, out to center. He puts it away, and that'll do it. The Mets make it six straight victories. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome. The show has AAA baseball for you. It's the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders taking on the Syracuse Mets. With my partner, Chris Singleton, I'm John Shambi. Welcome to a special game for us down in the minor leagues, checking on some futures. And we're not alone, Singy. Some folks from the team's front office are here to check out. A and now, Brett Beatty. Batting four. And the pitch. There's the strike. Well, we call that no keyhole. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Get your pitch, huh? You'll won. On the ground. And it goes just foul. The 0-2. 
Liner to second and picked on the hop. And that is the third out of the inning. Now here is Brett Beatty. Grounded out his first time. Herman back to work. The other way, calls it in, two away. At the play, Brett Beatty. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning-ending double play. Herman back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Lee over at second. Blankenhorn over at first with one away. Now here's a flare off the bat. Makes the grab and there's two gone. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third. So up next, Brett Beatty for the fourth time tonight. The pitch. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Florial pulls it down, and that is that. So they pick up a run on two hits. No errors and a man left. And welcome back. Welcome if you just joined us, John Shami and Chris Singleton, as we've got two away in the ninth. Two outs, runner on first. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. Edge of the zone, call the strike. Strike one. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Here comes a pitch. That misses the zone. And now it's even one and one. Tying run at first. The winning run at the plate. So now one and two. Movement in Milwaukee's bullpen. Josh Hader up and loosening in the pen. Is just one strike away. Rip to third. And that'll do it. Back here in Houston, welcome in John Shambi and Chris Singleton. We've got one out here in inning number seven. The Mets are in a strong position about halfway into the year as they're contending for a postseason spot. This is about what we expected of them, Singy, and they've done well. For sure. It's one thing to have high expectations coming into the year, but then you got to go out there and back it up. They're showing that they're for real. The first baseman, Julian Williams. 
calling for the intentional walk, and that loads up the bases. And the force play is now in order. The right fielder, number 30. Kyle Tucker up next for the Astros. A guy who makes an impact not just at the plate, but also in the field. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. Left-hand batter waits. On the ground to third. Base hit. One run is in. The tying run is in to score, and we are starting over. We are tied at two. Just a clutch at bat right there. Big time swing when this team really needed it. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team at bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. And now Chaz McCormick. And first offering is fouled off. Kicks and fires. Strike two. They haven't separated from the pack too much, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if they make a move or two and add some juice for a postseason push. Next pitch is outside. On the ground to first. Could be two. Comes home with it for one. Not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Jeremy Pena up next for the Astros. The pitch. There's a strike. These home fans, they are making a lot of noise, putting pressure on that pitcher out there. Fouled off. He was late. Two. And down on strikes he goes. Huge strike out there. Well, this guy competes hard. We see the emotion there. I love it. Great job of getting out of the jam. Back here at Minute Maid Park. Ready to begin the eighth. And now the center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. Activity in the bullpen for the Astros for the first time. Ryan Stanek up and throwing. Javier warming up as well. Left-hand hitter waits. Packed house here at Minute Maid. Next offering is in for a strike. Next one misses, and it's two and two. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. Right-hander kicks, deals. Out to short. Sends it to first. One up, one down. Starling Marte up to hit. He's already homered in this game. The pitch. That's inside, and it's one to know. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Next offering down low and in the dirt. The 2-0 is in for a strike. And a base hit up the middle. Now, oh, just a nice job coming through in a pretty high leverage spot yeah, right there. Everything was on time and fluid in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. One down, runner at first. And now it's Mark Vientos for the fourth time tonight. Neris back to work. And that misses off the outside edge. Oh, that ball got him pretty good out there on the mound. Whips it to first in time. That's it out. Now bad. 
Now it's J.D. Davis. You know, Boog, if you're that base runner at second base, you want to be quiet out there. Not bouncing around, not distracting your teammate, the hitter. Make sure that he can clearly focus on that pitcher and that release point. Right-handed reliever. That catches the top part of the zone. And the count one and one. Move to second. Marte dives back in. At the belt and fires. Just missed. That one in for a strike, two and two. And it's second. On the ground, right side. And it finds its way through for a hit. Not in time. He's safe. Mission accomplished there as he picks up the RBI to give him the lead. Pretty good fastball location. Down and in on the corner, but that was just a nice job to handle it. Hit it hard. Very tough spot to get the barrel to most of the time, though. Here's Mark Canna. He's sitting on 99 career homers. We'll see if this is the moment to notch number 100. And first offering is fouled off. Davis off of first with two away. Right side. He takes it himself to the bag, and that'll do it. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's now a 3-2 ball game. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And stepping in for the Astros, Martin Maldonado. This is a guy who is very highly regarded defensively. Fun to watch him control stuff behind the plate. Good game caller, good at framing, but it's that big arm that really stands out. There's the swing and a miss. Next pitch misses. Ball one. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two. I wonder how much of a distraction those fans behind home plate are to the opposing pitcher. I mean, they are into it. They're trying to will his claw back into this ball game. And a swing and a miss. And now one away. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down one. Any leadoff base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. Here's the former MVP, Jose Altuve. First offering misses the mark. Ball to strike. And he grounds one back up the middle. Fires over to Davis. And that quickly, two away. The left fielder, number 23. Now Michael Brantley steps in. One for three. The wind of the pitch. That's inside. Ball one. In this situation, as the number two hitter, two out, nobody on, you want to be a table setter. Work the at-bat, get deep, whatever it takes, get on first base. The next pitch misses, and now 2-0. and oh. He's been raking in recent games, and a big reason why, getting ahead in counts. He's been able to do that consistently, and you see the results. Line drive, makes the play, and it's out number three. Through eight full, it's the Mets three, and the Astros two. We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Ryan Stanek. And his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance. Back here at the ballpark, down the third baseman, Eduardo Escobar. Leading off for the Mets, the third baseman, Eduardo Escobar. 
pitch. The other way, and he beats the shift. Now he turns and heads for second. Not in time. He's got a double. With that fastball, even though it's high velocity, you've got to live on the outer edges. When it's right on a tee, right down the middle, professional hitters are not going to have a problem turning it around. And stepping in for New York, Dominic Smith. And Boog, I'd say he's due. And here it comes. On the ground to first, and he grabs it in foul ground. Next offering is in for a strike. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Rafael Montero preparing to come on if needed. Javier getting loose as well. Andy O2. Squirts away a little bit. No advance. Good job behind the dish. And the righty deals. And a foul ball. He stays alive. And a ball and two strikes. And he hits a ground ball right side. Now Tuve handles it. Whips it to first. A great play deep in the hole. Here's Luis Guillorme. No RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. And that's in there for strike one. In the infield at the corners, don't be surprised to see them come home first and prevent that run from scoring. Now the one. That misses, one and one. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Up the middle. That's a base hit as a run scores. Picks himself up in RBI. That could be a dangerous pitch if you don't get it inside enough because as a hitter, you see it coming across the plate the whole way. No problem handling it and putting a good swing on it that time. James McCann in now. Stanek back to work. In there at the knees. It's 0-1. Next offering is down low. One ball, one strike. One one to McCann. That one hit the knees for a strike. That fastball at the bottom of the zone can be very effective. Just got to keep it on the corners. Stays alive. And a one two again. That one missed. The pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Guillaume stands at first with one out. Next pitch has popped up. Makes the grab. Two down. Now batter. Back to the top this of the Mets the order. Here's Brandon, Brandon Nimmo. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. First pitch, and he just misses. Boy, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths.
The 1 1. Runner on the goal. That's out to center field. McCormick settles under it. And that is that. But well, they pick up one run on the RBI single. It's now 4 2. I remember as a child, music made me smile. Some people called it rhythm and soul. I could never get enough of this kind of stuff because I think they called it rock and roll. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, and he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. Number 39, Edwin Diaz. Bottom of the ninth, here's the third baseman, Alex Bregman. Leading up for the Astros. And a pitch. The third baseman, Alex. So important for him to control the heart rate right now. He's got to go through the heart of this lineup. The 0-1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. Hey, okay, look, we'll see how it factors in. I just can't emphasize how much that insurance run in the top of the ninth means. I mean, just such a big difference mentally when you're chasing two runs instead of one. A 1-2. One, and that one just missed off the outside edge. Really good slider. He's up there just hoping that it ends up off the plate away. Line, and that's a base hit. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. No outs. Runner at first. Here's some real power at the plate. You're Don Alvarez. This guy has turned into a beast. The 0 one All season long, he's racked up a number of saves. And sometimes the adrenaline doesn't get high enough until there's a runner or two on base. Swing and a miss struck him out. And that's the first out. Well, I definitely say that's a statement strikeout right there. You come out of the bullpen, go right after the hitters, and three pitches later, you got one out. I'll tell you what, if you're in the dugout, you're looking at each other and saying, he's going to be tough to get to today. Here's Guriel, known for his late inning heroics. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Riel gets a piece. Tying run at the plate. And he pumps it a strike. Well, so many hard throwing relievers in the game these days, you would think that guys have made the adjustment, but I don't know if you ever get used to it. Just pumping gas out of the bullpen. So hard to play catch up. Well, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of this stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back to back strikeouts. So. They haven't been able to move that runner up, get him in the scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. Ground ball up the middle, and it finds its way through for a hit. Up next to the now a move being made at second base. On to pinch run for Houston. Jose Siri. Chaz McCormick up next for the Astros and a pitch out to center Nimmo drifts towards it he puts it away and that'll do it the Mets take game one of the series on the road Another strong showing for them. They get the W, and they're really looking like a contender. Yeah, nice win, but, you know, they're not running away with the league or anything like that, but they do look strong, and especially in this one. I'm interested to see, though, how they come out after the All-Star break. A hot stretch, that could really push them to the front of the pack.